How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week nine, sitting at eight and zero. Nothing has gone wrong for us this season, so surely nothing will go wrong today. Uh, we're playing against Pitt. It looks like it should be an easy game. We lead in every statistical category. We are the higher overall team. Uh, turnover differential wise, we're up ten on the Panthers. Uh, they're one in five. Who have they played? They lost to an FCS team and then got beat by number one Penn State, lost to Syracuse, somehow beat Clemson, and then have lost to Duke in Kentucky. They come up to face us this week. Uh, we're the second te best team they've played. I'm hoping that we can beat them now better than 44 to 13. Having a common opponent with Penn State would help us with the eye test, uh, you know, give us maybe a transitive win type of deal there. So uh, I'm feeling pretty confident. I think they're like a 91 overall, even though they're a B plus. Let's go ahead and see uh, what we have for the top 25. Who's playing who this week? Texas plays number five TCU. Uh, so an undefeated team will lose there. Uh, Texas is 99 overall. TCU is only a 90. So we want the Horned Frogs to win that one for sure. A lot of conference games, but that is pretty much the only ranked matchup. We have 20 LSU and 22 Texas A&M, and we've got 24 uh, USC playing 25 Arizona State, so not a whole lot going on. But we've seen plenty of upsets this season, and hopefully we will see some more, just not with the number three team in the country. Uh, <laughs> that would be that would be pretty devastating. Right on just a reminder, is currently second in the Heisman watch. Haynes King, the quarterback for Texas A&M, sitting in the top spot. You've got Kaiwan Herndon, or maybe Herndon, uh, the running back for Colorado State there in third, which is, uh, you don't expect to see that from Colorado State. Edwards and Williams are the other two running backs sitting at four and five on the list. Um, nothing else really for us to look at. We can go through a quick little bit of conference standings, I guess. We'll just look at the overarching, uh, standings, not the divisional. So we are in the lead of the ACC with Louisville second. They're the only undefeated team in the conference. In the American, uh, it's USF, uh, Navy, Cincinnati, but USF and Cincinnati have only one played one conference game. The Big 12 is TCU and Texas, so... Not only does their game this week have uh, big implications for their ranking, but also for the conference championship itself. In the Big Ten, it's Penn State, of course, number one team in the country, the only undefeated team in conference uh, in the Big Ten. So they'll be hoping for the best there in the conference USA, Charlotte, North Texas, and Florida Atlantic, all undefeated there. How about our independents? We only have two right now, BYU and Army. BYU is 500 on the season, but Army sitting at 2-5 and five is quite a ways down there. In the MAC, it's Akron and Kent State, uh, both undefeated at, at the top. The Mountain West, it's Colorado State and Boise State. Uh, Pac-12 is Oregon, the only undefeated team in conference, but they do have two out-of-conference losses. A bunch of one-loss teams following behind them. And in the SEC, it is Texas A&M. Florida, Arkansas, and Auburn, all with one loss in conference. Um, Texas A&M, only a number 22 in the country. Pretty surprising there, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind a low ranking if they could just win the conference outright. We have leveled up to level 17. Man, Bronco Mendenhall has been huge for us. Jason Candle as well. Honestly, I'm going to give uh, at least half of the credit for our success this season to our coordinators. They've come in and done a fantastic job. But last week, our head coach level leveled up. So we get some more points to recruit with this week. And it's looking really good. We got, what, was it four guys to commit last week? Uh, all very good. This is so far looking pretty incredible for us. Ian Baines is 77 overall running back. Nick Pittman's an 80 overall guard. Jeremy Callahan a 79 overall D tackle and Will Dixon an 81 overall quarterback. Uh, potential running back wide receiver. He could play a lot of places. So we're looking good there. We're in the lead with a bunch of other guys like a lot of other guys. And the guys that we are at deficits with aren't all that much. I will be removing a couple of guys. David Boyd, 
committed to South Carolina. Matt Robinson is just way too far off. We could keep him on. Uh, this is one of those situations where he's stuck at 73% locked because nobody has offered a scholarship. So I won't take him off right away. We'll see maybe uh, if he just never gets offered a scholarship and we can snipe him there. But Chad Newton's going to be going to Iowa. No doubt about that. 96% locked. And they have their visit still to go. And I think it might be a pretty similar situation with Jesse Bowie. But again, no scholarships offered there. Uh, Ralph Jones is... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to write him off yet because he's... Well, he is only 69 overall, but we're only losing 120. If we gave him points, we could erase that deficit in a couple of weeks. So everything looks very solid for us. The guys that we're behind on, we're gaining. Spencer Stanley, this 80 overall cornerback that we've been fighting with Georgia for. We're starting to erase their deficit, however slow it may be. So that's fantastic. JJ Tyson is new to the board, and I'm actually going to just write up give him 700 points this dude i think 82 overall yeah he's uh, just absurd I, that is such a high overall recruit i think he might be the number one yeah the number one strong safety in the country so we'll give him the scholarship offer as well and um let's see before we do any more we got two visits that we can schedule so ryan hall we're gonna send to the duke game get those complimentary visits and caleb peoples uh, we are he's behind, but we can get more complimentary visits and maybe stay in the fight there against South Carolina. So I'm going to go by overall here, actually. And we're just going to make sure that all these guys have scholarships offered to them. And then we'll probably start just sinking more and more points into them. I mean, all of these guys are... Um, we're only at 74 overall here down at Lonnie Bryant, which is insane to me. Uh, so, Jesse Bowie, do we fight for this? Is this worth it? Gaining, no scholarship offered. Yeah, he's getting 700 points in a scholarship this week, and I bet with the defensive tackle, we will be right up there. Uh, we do have some points left. We do have, I think, a couple guys to scout. Are they worth scouting right now? Uh, Matt Robinson is the one that we're a long ways behind. John Jones, maybe Douglas Thomas, probably not right now, but John Jones, we can look at. He goes down to 72 overall. Okay, so one thing that we need if we look at our team needs is right now we're looking at a lot of players on defense, but we desperately need a tight end. We have two on the roster and they're both seniors and we haven't been targeting one yet. So I'm going to find a couple of tight ends and we'll scout them and then give the rest of our points away. Not a lot of crazy good tight ends available to us at this point. We've got George Fitzpatrick, who is pretty low lock and one of the higher overall guys. Let's go up to a 71 overall. And then Joe Purcell, I've added. He's only 61 overall, but I think he would be a better tight end than if we tried to convert a wide receiver. And also, we are fourth on his board, so maybe a, a decent chance to get up there. North Carolina has offered him a scholarship, and he's a bust, so <laughs> he's coming off the board immediately, and I guess we'll just have to hope for the best. Our remaining 650 points, uh, I'm thinking we give them to a linebacker. Let's go with Elvis Payne. We're already in the lead. We're the only team to offer them the scholarship. Let's try to get him locked down as he's sitting currently still at just 18%. So the sooner we can get that visit in and the more points we give him, the sooner we could potentially get him to commit. Uh, but he might have to wait until the offseason. Without any further delay, let's get into this game. Pitt, 91 overall with a 90 offense and a 92 defense gives us the edge in a couple of those categories. Um, uh, they have some cool stuff. What do we let them wear? This their standard of ways. But maybe we change up the helmet. No, that Steel City isn't great. How about we go blue pants? Yeah, we'll go blue pants for pits. And, well, we've worn the homes. We've worn the alternates. We've won the homes with the black jersey. Uh, what if we go teal jersey with black pants this time? Not the best look that we have, but at least it's a little bit different. Very excited to see if we can come out and play up to our potential today, you know, against a 1-5 in five team. They are pretty dang mediocre on their offense. They pass the ball better than they run it. They don't do a very good job of stopping people from uh, moving the football. Whereas defensively, we are, I, I would hesitate to say anything worse than best in the nation. Uh, just 
absolutely suffocating opposing offenses so far this season. Offensively, uh, there's things that are left to be desired, but we're moving pretty well regardless. Top players for them, they've got a running back, a right end, and a center, all in that 94 overall mark, but they also have a fullback and a wide receiver out with broken bones, a vertebrae, and an elbow, respectively. So two players that I'm sure that they will uh, miss quite a bit. Maybe not the biggest injuries, but you never like to lose players. Back in Conway for the fourth time in a row? That, that sounds about right. Let's see what we can do to get this one underway. Uh, Pitt wins the coin toss. Tails never fails them. And it looks like we're going to start with the football today. So Marquise Jackson going to try to get this game underway with a little bit of momentum. Uh, what was it? The first two games, he had five special teams touchdowns. I don't think he's had one since. So I would love to get him a kick return or a punt return for uh, six. But before that happens, we have to get good blocking. And we really haven't. Starting at the 15 or maybe the 14 yard line, we're going to run the ball on first down. CJ Beasley just getting us a couple of positive yards. And starting this offensive machine. I'm going to keep it on the ground on this second and eight as we'll try the read option. Never mind. Look at the, how they're playing. Really pressed up on Marquise. Safety roaming to the wrong side of the field here. This could be a big, big play. Marquise is gone. Can we get it to him? Does he have the speed to outrun this man? Wow. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to give him a little bit of BM. Oh my gosh, Marquise, 31 catches on the season for 821 yards and seven touchdowns. And he starts off this game with a bang. 7-0. Uh, Two plays from scrimmage and we've already scored. Uh, doesn't bode well for Pitt. Does for us, however. Trying to bring a little bit of a blitz on this first down with the linebackers. They're going to run it out towards the edge. Jenkins slows him down and Kale Mackey's there to get the hit convenient only giving up a yard on the play as this one's going to be a option keeper for the quarterback definitely would have been better for him to hand that one off we've gotten ourselves to the third down can we force the three and out gonna be using Kale Mackey they're going with the slip screen and he is there for the easy tackle it's a loss of four for Pitt and they're gonna have to punt this one away to Marquise see what we can do here on this returnable punt need to get a nice early block for Marquise and maybe oh there's a flag down you hate to see it this is gonna back us up a bit thankfully only a holding not a clipping it was the freshman strong safety getting hit with the call as again on first down we will hand this one off and Brayden Bennett finds some space finds the crease and gets seven yards Looking to run the ball again here as, man, they really want to keep bringing the safety up. Uh, they're asking for it. I mean, sure, Marquise might not be able to burn his man, but somebody's going to be able to get open here, I, I imagine. Go for a little bit of hot routing, and we'll see. I'm throwing it up. I'm having cats fight behind me. Uh, very distracting. Just a skirmish in the room, but uh, thankfully that one was just incomplete. All of a sudden, I started hearing screaming cats, which is never great news. Third and three, we're going to run the ball. And Brayden fumbles it. Man, our running backs have some issues fumbling the football. Turnover number one of the game, as Pitt has pretty good field position here. Might have still been fourth down, but at least we could have gone for it or punted it away. Instead, it will be first and ten in plus territory for this, guys. Is, uh, okay, they're going to run. And we're not going to have anything there. Kind of was expecting that one to go out towards the edge, so we went out of our way. Instead, Pitt runs it up the middle and gets themselves an easy, for easy first down. This one uh, could go poorly for us if we allow them to score on this drive, if we can't tackle as well. Oh, my goodness. We're back to this, huh? Oh, I can't allow this. We got to start bringing the pressure. Seeing what we can do to jump the snap. Jenkins gets in there, but it's too late. Manny Stokes gets burned by Aiden Hemingham. And it's a tie ball game. One in five pit. Bringing a fight today. Well, maybe Marquise can just give us that one right back. Uh, this is really deep into the end zone, but I'm going to be stupid and bring it out anyways. 
Uh, it seems like so far this season, the bad field position hasn't hurt us all that much, but Marquise says it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and get a 75-yard return and put us into really good field position for the start of this drive, which uh, that was about as good as I could have asked for. First down, we'll run the ball. Got to just continue to trust in the running backs, even if they do fumble it more often than I expect. And on second and five, coming out looking at this screen. And we're going to throw it. Beasley, well, he had a chance. He had a chance, but it's not quite enough. Gets hit at the line of scrimmage. It's a big hit. Thank goodness he held onto the ball. And as Bennett has come back into the game, we're going to look for him through the air. Is he going to be open? This could be a tough throw, a dangerous one, but we find him. He's got some space. He almost made that last safety miss, but he's got us the first and goal inside the five now. So the offense continuing to keep things moving. We'll run it up the middle on first and goal, and CJ Beasley can't get into the end zone. Seems like he's doing a really good job this season of getting to the inch line. You already know what that means, though. It's time for JJ Barr and the fullback dive on this one, and JJ up the middle has no problems breaking the plane and getting us six more points to retake the lead. All righty, Frederick, where can you put this one? Seems to me returnable. No, they're going to take the touchback. All right, defense. You got to make amends for that last drive. They ran the ball really well last time, but we're going to try the 3-3-5 anyways and just try to prevent them from throwing on us because that's how they scored, but we're not having a good time. Just unable to stop them at the moment. This one's going to be a screen, and we're there, but I just missed. So the blocking looks good. There is a flag down. What is this going to be? Please be against them. Thank goodness. The lucky penalty puts them back to a first and 18. Bails us out. They're going to try to run the ball here, and we're there to eat them alive. And uh, They're going to say he got a couple of inches, but I'm going to say at the line of scrimmage. So now we really know uh, they're probably going to be passing here. Could see some screens. I guess we could see some interesting runs as they put three backs back there after motioning the wide receiver, and they handed off for three. So third and 14. Uh, I will be pretty disappointed if we can't hold them on this one. Waiting, waiting, waiting over the middle. They're throwing it deep. Plenty of guys there. Hart can't get the interception. Neither can Jenkins. But we do force the fourth down with only 13 seconds left in this first quarter. But good enough for a turn. Could send us into the second. Uh, you always know I'm looking for something out towards the edge. The blocking, okay. There's enough space for Marquise to do something, trying to avoid penalties. And yeah, clock does burn down to zeros. He gets 29 yards and puts us pretty much at about midfield. So, uh, end of one. Mm, should be a bigger blowout than it is or, sh or should be a bigger lead I can't say blowout yet although it feels like it's heading that direction instead we'll just have to get back to work I'm just gonna wait for them to press up on Marquise and then let him take off again because I know that he's gonna be wide open on a deep route again today until then we'll just bide our time and play our offense and wait for somebody else to get open Logan Malden potentially is he there? No. Can I scramble and pick up a block? I can't. Really was hoping that CJ was going to get there in time. It's a third and four to deal with now as we will pass the ball and kind of a risky one. Oh my gosh. I didn't think the pass was going to get off in time, but we do find Marquise. Oh no. He could be a little bit shaken up after the play though. Hoping that it's not a bad one. Let's try this option. Haven't really been able to run it yet. And there goes right on. Good, good seven-yard pickup as we await the news of one of our stars. Let's go next man up. Just keep passing the ball. And Mobley. Oh, come on. Tyson's got to be able to hold on to those, but drops it through the contact. Gives us another third down to work with as we're going to run the ball here. But I don't want to go. I don't like any of this. Let's see what Tyson Mobley can potentially do as, again, we're just going to go with the hot route on this one. See if something works out for us. As snapping the ball outside the pocket, and we're going to scramble. Maybe could have made some moves, but again, trying to avoid the turnovers. We're already minus one on the day. So instead, we'll just uh, 
Well, we'll just keep running the ball as much as we can. First down and run up the middle for Braden Bennett. The blocking was phenomenal. He kind of broke a tackle, and he gets into the end zone, finds it 24 yards downfield. Completely unexpected, but beautiful running and beautiful downfield blocking as well as it looked like as he kind of ran into the blocker that he wasn't going to get it, but just kept churning the legs. And Marquise Jackson, back spasms, out for three weeks. That's pretty brutal. Oh, you hate to see it. Uh, I don't know if we have a bye week in there at all. It would be really nice, but we're definitely going to miss that. Whatever Heisman campaign he may have had going on, I would hesitate to say that it will still exist after missing three weeks of the season. As Man, ugh, their running game is kind of annoying right now. We are not doing a very good job of stopping it, so they're able to move the ball much better than they should. And even when we bring a little bit of pressure, it's another nine yards up the middle. Can't allow it to keep happening, so we'll try to bring some pressure. Man goes in motion. It's an option out towards the edge, and we bring the hit stick on the quarterback for a loss of two. Just cut off his angle to pitch the ball and then just drilled him. The tackle for loss forces the third down around midfield, and we're bringing the safety blitz to see if we can get in here and cause some disruption. A man wide open, though, as Don Riley can't get there. Gets beat by Leonard Hall for 17 yards. Just try to keep bringing some pressure on this first down. They'll step back to pass over the middle. They have another man open, and they continue to move the ball here. Pitt's looking pretty strong on this drive. They've already scored once today. Wouldn't be surprised if they did it again as we get the sack on the quarterback. We just had to keep pushing through the contact. Eventually, we hit him enough to make him fall. And that allows us to back them up now into a third and nine as they will be looking to go to the air, expecting to get beat by an out route. No, the quarterback, I don't know if that was a designed run or if he had to scramble immediately, but he gets hit. Uh, in the backfield for a loss of so 4th and 13. Even though they're at the 40-yard line, they're going to punt this ball away. No marquees back to return, but uh, I don't think we'll be getting a return. Probably just a touchback, and it will be. Uh, interesting decision-making there. Down two touchdowns to the number three team in the country. I don't think that that is the move that I'm making, but, uh, well... That's why they're one in five, potentially. Throwing on the run, we find DJ or Rat. Yeah, okay, DJ Johnson. It's been a while since we've targeted him, so I kind of forgot his first name. Great throw from Radon while moving, however, and it gives us second and one. I do have to pay attention to the clock a little bit on this drive as there's a open Mobley. And oh, if that tackle is broken, he's gone, but gives us the first down. Now, what can we do first and 10? One D lineman not set. Will it matter? Doesn't look like it. Braden Bennett trying to get towards the edge. Gets a seven yards and then gets tackled. And the clock is still moving, but I don't care all that much. Uh, can we get this playoff quickly? Outside the pocket. So much space. So much space to scramble. Radon can't make the man miss, but he gets us inside the 25. The best part about this drive is that we're moving so quickly. We haven't had to take a timeout yet, although we probably will after that. This one looking at the mid right read option right on. Yeah, not getting the first down. We will take our first time out as we have broken the 100 yard rushing mark. And right on, I think a little bit shaken up on that one. So Williams comes in at the QB spot. We're just going to hand the ball off towards the edge and Brayden Bennett gets us another first down. He took another big shot. Uh, we're going to let Williams throw here on first down. Stepping back over the middle. We've got Chad Bradshaw. Not the best pass. Only four yards. And we're going to have to stay in the hurry up. Can we find somebody open enough to get into the end zone? Not really. Throwing one up. Brayden Bennett has it. Breaks a tackle. And he got a couple of yards. But we got to take our second time out with only 39 seconds left. No news yet on Radon. So David Williams will stay in for the time being. As we will look to maybe score, at least get the first and goal on this third down. 
And in the pocket, outside the pocket, trying to make the throw. CJ Beasley has it, and it is the first and goal. Great passes from Dave right now. We're going to hurry up to the line as quick as possible and try to get a runoff. They're very stacked on that right side of the line. Luckily, we're running to the left. And CJ Beasley gets the yard that we need, gets into the end zone, and extends this lead with 30 seconds left in the half. And right on Randell has back spasms and is out for three weeks. Oh my goodness. This is not going well for us. If we win it, it'll be a Furic victory because what will it have cost us? Our star quarterback and our star wide receiver and return man. We're going to have to rely on the defense potentially to win us the next couple of games. Missing two of the biggest pieces of our offense, probably the two biggest pieces. And, uh, I mean, sure, David might be able to do okay, but he's not going to be nearly as good. Pitt, thankfully, not going to continue this drive, even though they had three timeouts. So we'll get into the locker room. Uh, up 28-7, but down a quarterback and a wide receiver. Um, I mean, <laughs> that hurts. That hurts quite a bit. Some big plays for us, but unfortunately, most of the big plays were caused by the two players that have now been knocked out. Well, let's just get this third quarter underway and we might be trying to burn the clock on this one. The last thing I need is for Pitt to take out more of our players. Uh, just really frustrating that a one in five team about to be one in six is the reason that we could potentially lose games in the future. Aside from the one drive where Pitt started in our own territory after a turnover. Our defense has pretty much smothered these guys. Uh-oh. Uh, my user's not going to help with that, though. Manny getting his tackle broken. It's up to Jenkins. He can't get the tackle, and Kale Mackey finally saves it. Well, uh, I shouldn't have said that because they go immediately for 31 yards. This quarterback has one incompletion on the day as they're going to go with the option, and we're there with Jenkins, but he can't get the tackle again. So we give up seven yards when we should have dropped him for a loss. I'm bringing so much pressure on these plays, but it's just not quite working out for us. Second and three, expecting them to go to the air, and they will. Just going to try to back out Jenkins, and thankfully we get the sack. So third and nine, a chance to get off the field for the defense. I expect that in this situation, they would probably punt the ball away if it was fourth down. They've already done it once as they go to the air, and Leon gets the interception. Back even on the turnover differential. No chance of them going for it on fourth down. Sandcastle doing a good job just getting up there and holding on to the ball. Did a great job of getting a foot in bounds as well. Uh, I got to send them deep here. I know that Williams isn't a great passer. If somebody burns their man early, that would be great news for us. As we'll just kind of go again with a simple little hot route. And nobody is able to get open. My goodness, they got jammed up at the line by the time I was able to see somebody and try to get the throw up we're getting sacked so a loss of 12 second and 22. well i'm just gonna run the ball here second down try to get positive yards or we can just get hit back at the line of scrimmage third and 22 the offense without radon i, I just don't see where it comes from let's see can somebody do something spectacular here i kind of doubt it but you never know so we'll try to hot route some stuff, and I'm just going to throw one up. Oh, that's an interception. I, I didn't know what route that was supposed to be. Uh, apparently, the defensive back knew it perfectly because he didn't react to the little hitch in it, and he was just waiting there for the easy interception. Well, I am officially done allowing David just to throw to his heart's content, so we're going to just burn the clock out every opportunity that we get, even if it means going three and out. Um... As long as we hold these guys to no score or maybe a field goal, we could be okay. Only a 21-point lead right now as that's a great tackle for a loss. Dangerous one, almost completely missed. We're now set up, however, to hold them to this fourth down and see the kicker come out. On third and seven, they step back to pass. Quarterback, plenty of time. How does a man... That big, get that wide open. They get 17 yards and a first and goal. Defense choosing the worst plays to decide to slack off on. First and goal, expecting them to go to the air, and they will. Safety blitz is coming. Will it matter? Kale Mackey 
can't get there. We don't give up the touchdown. Thought I had a chance to ball hawk it. Instead, it's eight yards and they're on the goal line. The last thing I want is for them to be able to run this one in. So we're going to try to pinch up the line in the goal line. And it doesn't matter. They score immediately. Nothing that we can do to stop them that time. The only two times that they've scored have come off of turnovers that put them in good field position. Oh my goodness. Every time I record one of these videos, something just has to go wrong with the recording. Uh, if you look at the score, not much time has gone by, but we've scored a touchdown. Charles Hart came in to replace Marquise Jackson and immediately took the kick return after Pitt's uh, touchdown directly to the house. I have no idea how the recording stopped. It makes literally zero sense to me, but uh, you guys missed a fantastic kick return. So the offense won't be taking the field. Instead, it will be the defense once again, and we'll see. Can they get the stop with, uh, you know, a lot of field to work with? Seems to be the way they've been doing it so far. Man coverage hasn't been doing too well for us. Let's try a zone blitz. See if that helps at all. They're going to go to the air. Oh my gosh, of course, this freaking running back is wide open. He's the highest overall player on their team, and I'm getting real annoyed of him getting the football. The blitz come in. We can't get there in time. Pass gets away, and there's a fumble, but it goes out of bounds, so Pitt gets lucky, and they'll retain possession. A massive hit from Brown there. Clean fumble. It just unfortunately goes immediately out of bounds. Sandcastle maybe had a chance, but he might have kicked it out. We've got a second and four now to try and deal with as they're going to bring a man in motion and a false start from the offensive line. We'll back it up. Good news for us. All right. How about this second and nine? They're going to go play action. Somebody's got to be open. There it is. Smith can't get there. Oh, he has the speed to jump that route. He just couldn't do it. This quarterback turning into an all-galaxy type of player as he's only had two incompletions on the day. One of them, a great interception by Sandcastle. I think the other one was just him throwing away the ball out of pressure. Really annoying because it seems like no matter how much pressure that we try to bring, they just happen to get the pass off. And oh, <laughs> should have been a pick for Don Riley, but he can't hold on. All right, can we get the stop here on second and ten? Man comes in motion, expecting a run, and no, they're going to go with the screen. And man, he's able to break it up. So finally, another incompletion. Just haven't seen those often enough. Potentially in field goal range for Pitt. As we'll see a third and ten, they'll step back to pass, and they get the first down. <laughs> oh, man. Three of our players on fire, two of them hot, and we can't do anything to slow down this team right now. This one, just throwing it away. It looked like it was going to be maybe a screen, but quarterback decides to just avoid the pressure. So we'll see what we can do. And just, again, trying to hold him to a field goal, trying to let that clock burn. This is going to be a screen. And Emmanuel Bush gets there to drop him for a loss of four. We've got another chance to get off the field on this one. They'll step back to pass. And... <laughs> They get another first down. How is it that a 1-5 pit team is going to come out and do this to our defense, who's been so, so good this so far this season? Just uh, ridiculous. We get them into a third long, and they easily seem to convert it. A loss of about five on that last play gives us this second and goal from the 15. This is going to be a run. And plenty of space as he continues to fall forward. And Tim Holman gets eight yards on his first carry of the game. This gives us a third and goal. What can we do with it? Uh, they step back to pass. Somebody's going to be open. Quarterback finally getting some pressure, but he's got a man in the back of the end zone. And they'll score another touchdown. Recording is still going as Charles Hart will get his second kickoff. Man, they put this one deep. I'm still going to let him take it out. If you take one to the house, you better believe I'm going to give you a chance to make it two in a row with Charles Hart streaking down the sideline. I don't know if he has the speed or the stamina to take it, but he gets it 93 yards inside the red zone. Okay, this man's turned into the new Marquise, maybe. Absolutely incredible. 
as we will just look to again reestablish the three touchdown lead i am gonna let this one go into the fourth quarter uh we i think we just got to get out of this game right now <laughs> Pitt is playing uh not like a team that only has one win on the season they're keeping it way closer than it should and we already have two guys injured so we just got to get the win and while a touchdown would be incredible here, I think also the priority has to be on getting this clock burned out. Williams keeping it, sliding down, obviously much, much slower than Radon, but still able to pick up a few yards here and there. And we'll go ahead and just run this one up the middle to try and give ourselves the first and goal. And well, CJ Beasley's just going to score. Maybe best case scenario for Pitt. Uh, I mean, I don't see them getting a goal line stand, so it leaves them with more time on the clock to work with. And we'll see if we can put ours away here. 42 to 21 at the moment. Because they won't return that kick either. Uh, uh, I want to create another turnover on this drive just to really throw the dagger into them. Not exactly sure where the pressure will come from. Uh, but I got to hope as this one's going to be thrown up and oh, <laughs> is almost able to get Manny in there. So, so close to a potential ball hawk there. Unfortunately, doesn't work out. Second and two. I was expecting the run, but they're going to go to the air. And, well, they found a man and they say he was in bounds and he got 12 yards. But the refs are going to look at it. I feel like he was out of bounds, but we'll see. What does this look like? foot leaving the ground i don't know based on the way this game works i feel like this could get re reversed they only had to look at it once and it is reversed so we get that third down try and get the stop and i'm gonna bring the pressure here we'll see if it works out because i wouldn't be surprised if they ran the ball they're going to pass it and man he's not going to be able to get there in time so they will find Letter to Hall for a gain of five. They get their first down. And they'll continue to stay alive on this drive, at least for now. Over my head, they find Jermaine Clark for 18 more. Our defensive backs and main coverage are just getting absolutely torched today. Uh, thank goodness that guy's out of bounds, man. We just have no defense right now. Currently outgained in total yards by this pit team you hate to see that as we'll try to bring a little bit of pressure and maybe a chance sandcastle drops his second pick of the game you gotta hold on to that one leon there's no excuse to drop it that brings up a third down for us but i would have much rather have just had the ball via the turnover third and ten can we get the stop bringing some pressure quarterback takes the sack the running back just couldn't get the block for him so it's fourth and 14 i'm curious if they go for this though and it will be the offense taking the field for the fourth down. No punt this time out as they will look to the air. And over the middle, they found a man. But oh, okay, Don Riley with the massive hit breaks up the pass. And it's a turnover on downs with the three touchdown lead. And the ball at midfield and only four minutes left in the game. I think that might be enough for us to consider this one pretty much one. We'll just keep running the ball and burning the clock. And I'm curious to see if Pitt decides to take their timeouts. But I'm not so sure it's going to matter. Working pretty well. Getting good runs as well. The blocking has been solid so far early on, at least on this drive. And we haven't had a great game. And we haven't had a great game running the football so far today. But, you know, we're doing just enough. We've broken at least the 100-yard mark as a team. And we have enough carries of five yards or more, which is really what I'm looking for. Timeouts are not being taken by Pitt, which pretty much means they're waving the white flag. So this first down on that third and inches with the carry to Braden Bennett, he's still not down. Uh, that's pretty much going to seal the deal. So we will run one last read option here and slide down or i guess diving for david williams uh and that's gonna be enough for us to just come out in the victory formation and we will let dave take the knee uh you know he did enough to keep the offense alive and allowed us to score a couple of times so we get the little bit of extra xp and we will come away with the win we're still undefeated at the end of the day that's all that matters
but it certainly did not come for free. Paid the price in the form of our two-star players being knocked out for three weeks with back spasms. Uh, we end up winning it 42 to 21. And I just, I don't know. Feel like we could have done more. Defense gave up more points than I wanted. Pitt came and played a great game. Uh, some big heavy hits as well. CJ Beasley ends up being our player of the game. <laughs> 40, less than 40 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Uh, I think that says quite a bit about the way that this one went. So that was an interesting game. Got out to a strong start. Uh, wasn't the greatest ending. We still end up winning it by a decent amount. Minus one in the turnover differential. You know that I'm not happy about that. That's kind of my big point of emphasis on the season. Gave up 224 through the air, but only 37 on the ground, which is good news. Uh, we ran for 140, passed for 151, but then we also had all the special teams yards. CJ Beasley is our offensive player. The game's a little bit weird. Leon as the defensive, four tackles, a pick, and a deflection. Uh, just, you know, very pedestrian stats. But pedestrian stats don't matter if you still get the win. Up to 9-0 and now on the season. Uh, there was a chance that Penn State was going to lose to a 1-6 Maryland advanced towards oh my gosh week number 10 we play at penn state how did i not know this was on the schedule uh well we have a very good chance to get to <laughs> number one in the country next week if we don't get there this week um recruiting wise not a whole lot of news battles visits about what you expect we're ranked number two to penn state did lose they're gonna be angry they're gonna be wanting revenge they're like a 99 overall team uh <laughs> This is not the game that we want to have to come into with our two of our best players in uh, Radon and Marquise injured. They lost to Maryland 14 to 17. I'm very, very scared. Sitting at number two in the country is great news, but uh, we have to play a number 15 Penn State. Ooh, a little bit scary. All right, what else happened in the top 25? Uh, Texas was able to beat TCU 40-14. to Pretty easy for them at the end of the day. TCU with their loss. That's their first of the season. Uh, Penn State has their first loss of the season. Florida takes their second. This is a drop from 7 down to 18 after losing 42-28 to to BYU. That's a pretty big loss as they'll play Georgia this week. Uh, Illinois plays Purdue. Cincinnati took their second loss against Navy 14-10. Uh, Texas A&M lost to LSU. Oregon lost to Arizona, who is now ranked. That's an overtime game, 45 to 42. And UCLA and Arizona State both drop out of the rankings. Uh, interesting. How about the BCS? Still just number two. That's fine. If we beat Penn State, uh, it should look pretty good for us. We're really having to just fight against the state of Pennsylvania these past couple of weeks. And it's, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't know how to feel about it. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, or maybe for me, fortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. We will take on the Nittany Lions in, in the next episode. Radon and Marquise need your help. So uh, one like equals <laughs> one fewer back spasm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if you if you like the video, please feel free to like it. It helps get the video seen by more people. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, feel free to do that as well. Uh, and then while you're down there, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's a link to the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster, you guys are the TL boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.